Hey guys, here we are after the show again. Uh, you know, I wanted to dig a little bit further into this beer. Uh, not necessarily just the beer, but the actual process. Um, you know, Tim, I know you brew a lot of beer. You're yeah. really into the process of brewing. Uh, you know, 2011 is going to be my year that I want to brew my first batch. I have a really good idea of the process, but um, why don't you tell me a little bit more about this, the, the actual brewing process of this beer? I know we talked about it a touch in the review, but maybe you want to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Thank, thank you. One, thank you for the opportunity yeah. to do it because, you know, I, I actually... I love you. Could have man. gone on for a long time. Man. Well, let's do it. I love you too. <laughs> and really, when it comes to brewing, mm -hmm. you've got you know a few main components that you go through. You know, one of them is essentially your mashing, which is where you take your grains, you add in your water, you let it sit. <clears throat> That's where you're converting all those starches into sugars. That's mm -hmm. what you're going to make your booze out of. Mm -hmm. Well. After that, you louder it, which essentially just means washing all of that converted sugar off the grains. After that, you boil that. So you've got that sweet wort that comes out of the loudering process, mm -hmm. and then you're going to go in and boil it. You're going to get a couple of things that happen in that. One's a hot break, which we made a quick mention of in That's the show. That's the point where you add the hops, right? Yeah. When you boil that after loudering is when you add in your various different hop additions. Now, yeah. some people do, and I think maybe even, you know, since it's a dogfish head beer, I think even they, what, they do something called a first wort hop, mm -hmm. which is they actually add hops to the, um, the mashing process. So they're starting to infuse alpha acids during the process. But in this old style of beer, being a sati, they deviate a little bit from a traditional brewing practice. Mm -hmm. um, back in the 1500s when they were brewing this, after they laddered that out, they didn't boil it. They left all of that stuff that you see floating in a bottle, which yeah. essentially you could call turbidity. Um, <laughs> it's just essentially coagulated proteins yeast proteins, other things that have just kind of globbed together and are still in the bottle, still in the glass. So is that what this is, or is this actually, because this is a modern interpretation of that, is, are we really just seeing the bottle conditioned, you know, priming sugars and yeast? I think in most cases what we're seeing here is probably primarily priming sugars and some yeast. Mm -hmm. More yeast than the sugar itself, because a lot of that's going to be, you know, have been eaten up by now. Right. But because they didn't boil it out, you don't get that hot break. You don't get all those loose proteins to coagulate and fall out. So you get left with something that's almost a little bit like pond water. It looks like yeah. sea monkeys in there. Um, I love sea monkeys. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, what's, what's cool, though, is dogfish head. I mean, here, standard brewing practice now is after you louder, you boil. That's what you do. Well, they didn't boil it. They sterilized it, sanitized it with white hot river rocks. So they yeah. took big river rocks, yeah. heated them up in an oven or in a grill, and then literally dropped them into the tank and just let that do whatever it needed to do. And, and in the old days, they, they used to uh, put that on a fire, didn't they? Like they would put it, I think they used to put, and I'm just kind of going off of, you know, short little videos I've seen of Sam talking about this, but they used to put the rocks over a fire, like maybe yeah. on a screen, yep. and they would get them red hot, literally, yep. and they would dump them in the wort so that that, you know, would actually boil the beer. Because in the 1500s, or, you know, whenever this style came from, I'll trust you that it was 1500s, it's not like they, you know, had, you know, stoves right. or things that right. they could actually do. Yeah, that it was all fire at that point, and... You know, really, even at that point in time, I don't know that there was quite the knowledge of sterilization and how yeast operates and all of that stuff. It yeah. was just, we do something one way and it works, so let's just keep doing it that way. Yeah. But, you know, definitely wanted to, you know, really kind of let me spin my brewing wheels a little bit and, yeah. and tell you a little bit about how this one is brewed. And, uh, man, just tell me when you want to brew. I'm happy to help you out with your first batch. Well, you know, I've we'll got do it. a few batches under my belt, and I'm happy to, I'm we'll happy to it. help. It's fun. It's addictive. I do, want to, I do want to plug somebody who doesn't even know me, but um, and I'll put the link right down here. If you go to bridgesbrewery.com, they have a video where um, they brew, you know, some of the, I, I've never had it, but, you know, the video that they show of them home brewing is probably one of the most inspiring home brewing videos I've seen and it's one that's really you know made me make a New Year's resolution to brew my first batch of beer in 2011 I'll definitely you know have you help me out with that but thanks a lot for kind of taking this one a little bit further you know I think it's really good to talk about the process and it you know I, I think sometimes the story 
really makes somebody attach themselves to a beer, you know, a little bit more. But really like this beer, and I, you know, it's a success for them. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.